Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was just released and in place of a traditional post credit scene, they just released the first teaser for Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse, which is part two of the story, like Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame style. They've already revealed what's going on with the movie, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. And careful for spoilers for Beyond the Spider-Verse, if you haven't seen the movie yet, we need to talk about everything that happens, just because it does set up directly what's happening at the beginning of Beyond the Spider-Verse. But at the end of the movie, Miles Morales uses what they're calling the Get Home device, which is a version of the Master Weaver from the Spider-Verse comics and the Madam Web character put together, basically, to get back to his universe. But it detects the DNA of the spider that bit him from Earth-42, which apparently mutated his body, so now he has part Earth-42 DNA and sends him there instead. We learned that the spot tested Kingpin's Super Collider before the events of the first movie by yoinking the radioactive spider from Earth-42, and that spider is shown in his flashback scene was about to bite Earth-42 Miles instead. They explained that there was never supposed to be a Peter Parker Spider-Man to have existed on Earth-42. Earth-42 Miles was always supposed to be the one and only Spider-Man of that Earth. And because the spider bit Ultimate Miles Morales instead turning him into a version of Spider-Man, it prevented any Earth-42 Spider-Man from existing, which turned that into more of a Back to the Future 2 version of itself, like super dark version, evil corporations take over. Although you could call that a version of our Earth too, like evil corporations are all over the place. But on Earth-42 in the movie, chiefly among them, the Sinister Six cartel, which J. Jonah Jameson on that Earth is yelling about. He's talking about a curfew that's happening because they're having a turf war. That version of the Sinister Six was a bunch of the original characters from the comics that controlled large corporations. It was Electronics, as in Electro, phone, like Electro, Vulture Corp, a Sandman Rolex watch you see here, Scorpo for Scorpion, Dr. Octopus's company was just called Oct8 in RR for Rhino Casinos. More on them in a second because I do think that they will figure into the plot of Beyond the Spider-Verse. But ultimately, these events led to the death of Earth-42 Miles Morales' father instead of his uncle Aaron Davis, the original version of the Prowler on that Earth. And as a result, Earth-42 Miles goes dark and becomes the next version of the Prowler because his uncle Aaron Davis is a little bit darker, part of the idea being that his father wasn't there to lead him down a better path than his uncle did. So when Ultimate Miles Morales is captured by them at the end of the movie, it's meant to be a dark twist on Miles meeting Peter B. Parker in the first movie, tying him up to the punching bag. And even though it seems like his pleas with Earth-42 Miles are falling on deaf ears, and he'll try to revenge kill Miles, blaming him for the death of his father, just like Peter B. Parker escaped, I think they'll have a twist on that, where it seems like Miles is about to escape using his spider sting shocker ability. Right as the movie's about to end in that final scene with him, you see his finger reaching down to the chains with it charging up, getting ready to escape. While this is happening, Gwen assembles her own team, paying off her line from earlier at the movie at the beginning about never finding the right band to be in. The team is meant to be the right band here. It's everyone from the first movie in addition to Spider-Punk who's come back, Spider-Man India, and Spider-Bite, who all end the movie entering the portal to Earth-42 to rescue Miles. So Beyond the Spider-Verse is meant to pick up immediately after these moments, like literally right as he's escaping the punching bag. This Miles versus Earth-42 Miles, and I'd say he's going to fight Aaron Davis to this version of Aaron Davis, but I think the whole vibe of that scene of him hanging him up on the punching bag was just preparing him for Miles so that Miles could get his revenge for the death of his father. Like he chuckles, I'm not the Prowler because Miles is now, and this is his turn to get revenge. Ultimate Miles Morales had just put the rest of the pieces together for them. Like, he explains everything that happened. Like, I'm from another Earth. This spider bit me. It was supposed to bite someone else on this Earth. And Earth-42 Miles is putting the pieces together in his head. Like, oh, it's your fault. You're the person who took this from my Earth. You're the reason my father is dead. Even though it was the Spot who was responsible for all that, Miles gets blamed for pretty much everything in the movie by every different character. Like, Spider-Man 2099 blames him for everything. The Spot blames him for everything. Even though, technically, this is all the Spot's fault. Their fight will probably end in some kind of draw or them almost killing Miles. Like, Earth-42 Miles is supposed to be just as capable as Spider-Man Miles, so they're meant to be relatively evenly matched, but he's also facing Aaron Davis Prowler here, too. So early theory, Miles barely fights them to a standstill long enough for Spider-Gwen and her team to reach him and save him. You can let me know in the comments, though, if you think that Ultimate Miles will find a way to help Earth-42 Miles, and he'll eventually decide to become a hero and fight his Earth's version of the Sinister Six in the form of that cartel. 
that would be the more hopeful ending, and I think that's what they want to go with at the end of Beyond the Spider-Verse, at least for Earth-42 Miles. That was what his whole speech was with his version of Aaron Davis. Like, my uncle became the Prowler, but he wanted to be good, but he never thought that he could be good. You can totally be that person, too. So I think he's going to give that same speech to Earth-42 Miles. Like, there's goodness inside you. You can be a good person. So the Earth-42 will eventually get the hero that it was meant to have. It'll just be a version of the Prowler who's turned good because he won't have the spider bite. Sort of the same way that he inspired Peter B. Parker at the end of the first movie, where he went back to his Earth-616, married his version of Mary Jane, and they had Mayday Parker. Like, everything on his Earth was terrible until the end of the movie Miles inspired him. He went back and he made his Earth better. Spider-Gwen's team will be way more focused on stopping the spot and saving Miles' father. You can let me know if you think the spot will wind up killing one of his parents or if they'll make it in time to save both of them. They really want you to wonder if one of them is going to survive. But here's the thing about the spot. I think the reason why they kept hyping up the evolution of Miles' spider stinger shock ability is to show that he can drain the spot's dark matter energy just like he drains other types of energy. It'll just mess Miles up big time, absorbing all that dark matter. Early theory, he also starts bleeding a little from his armpits just because it messes him up so bad, paying off the jokes about his new suit in the movie. A couple of different characters repeat that joke about him bleeding from the armpits in the movie. And like Peter B. Parker says, they'll build him a new suit at the end of the movie. There was a montage earlier in the movie about building new suits. They're all based on comic book suits. There was even a cape-based suit that he designed, which is a reference to the Spider-Man cape jokes earlier in the first movie. And it's a no on the cape. I think it's cool. Take that off. It's ah. disrespectful. Spider-Man doesn't wear a cape. Uh, Peter, I, th I think this is a cape. <laughs> the other big thing that they tease much earlier in the film, too, is that Miles leaves his mother, like this is the last time that he sees her in this movie, saying that he promised that he would come back and he promised that he would have a nice cake that's not all messed up. So early prediction is that's how they end Beyond the Spider-Verse. They stop the spot from collapsing all of reality. Spider-Man 2099 comes around on him and finally leaves him alone. And they have some shawarma tag scene at the end of the movie where he comes home to his parents with a nice cake and introduces them to the rest of his friends that he mentioned at the beginning of Across the Spider-Verse. And they all eat cake that he brings back with him, including Spider-Ham. Like, it would be funny to see his parents meeting Spider-Ham. It can get weirder. He was also trying to tell his parents his secret identity like he was about to tell his mother a couple times. Then he tells the wrong Earth-42 mother. He'll probably tell his parents that he is Spider-Man at the end of the movie too. The other thing about the spot in Beyond the Spider-Verse is that he's doing all this like collapsing reality because he thinks that Miles was responsible for everything or at least blames him for everything that happened. And he thinks that Miles doesn't take him seriously. Miles sounds like he's going to try and talk him down a little bit, in addition to depowering him with his stinger ability, but instead of locking him up for the rest of all time like a normal supervillain, early theory is that Miles wins him over so he chills out and eventually tries to help him and just uses power, his brains for good in the future. During the comics, the spot was both a villain and a hero, so I think they're just playing on that same idea, like he could go either way. They'll end things in a more hopeful way and the spot will actually start doing some good. And because there were so many live action crossovers in Across the Spider-Verse, I think the idea is they want to set some of these characters up for Secret Wars Avengers 6 crossover. There were a lot of smaller crossovers with Tom Holland's Spider-Man during the movie like Doctor Strange, The Events of Spider-Man No Way Home, The Nerd on Earth 19999. There were the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man scenes. There were kind of crossover scenes, but expect bigger crossovers, bigger live action cameo scenes, like actual cameo scenes. Part of the idea, I think, is that during Across the Spider-Verse, one of the reasons why you didn't see bigger cameo scenes from all three of those versions of Spider-Man live action is because they would not have been cool with what Spider-Man 2099 was doing with Miles Morales. Let me know in the comments, though, what kind of big crossovers you want to see, like bigger crossovers with live action stuff in Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse. We'll start getting more trailers for Beyond the Spider-Verse soon. Of course, I'll do videos for everything. Everyone click here to learn how Loki Season 2 is connected to Spider-Verse with all the multiverse stuff. And click here for my full breakdown of the movie with all the Easter eggs. There's so many things in this movie. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.